Well, the marathon that has taken us quite a number of days in talking about the subject of ideas. First of all, in the first series, we're talking about the, how we can leverage the power of ideas into finding our purpose and into living our purpose. And then we thought it best that uh, we should just go ahead and delve into ideas deeply and find out how can we leverage the ideas, how can we position ourselves in such a way that we can get the most out of ideas. That's what we've been discussing in this uh, series and today we come to a close of the entire series and then uh, maybe next day we're going to start another episode, we're going to start another series on another message and it's going to be interesting. So I want you to stay tuned even as we come to a close of this one. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Well, obviously, you will notice that uh, it's been a progression of uh, episodes and one has been building on top of another. When we're talking about how you can position yourselves in such a way that you can leverage on ideas, you can get the most out of ideas. Number one, I'm doing a recap. If you're going to get the most out of ideas, the first thing you've got to do is to anticipate that the ideas are there. If, after all, you have to know that ideas are powerful and everyone has a position and everyone has an opportunity to utilize ideas. They come to all of us. You don't need to have a degree, a certificate, a diploma, whatever it is, as long as you're breathing. That's the qualification of ideation. As long as you're breathing, you're going to have ideas and they're going to be weird, they're going to be nice, they're going to be good and so on, but they will be there. That's a given. So anticipate them. But then number two, once you've anticipated the idea and it comes because as sure as the sun is out there every day, an idea is going to come to you. I kid you not. Especially if you are an active participator and you are actually channeling some ideas, they're going to look for you. They're going to keep coming to you. And even if you're not, I'm telling you, ideas are going to come to you. After they have come to you, what do you do? You capture them as soon as possible. Don't waste a minute. At the earliest convenience, write that idea down when it's still fresh because it can really disappear. They normally disappear like mist. And I'm talking from experience here. An idea comes to you and you're thinking, ah, I've got it. You know, it's in full multimedia. You're clear with it and you can hold it, so to speak. But then you don't write it down. A few hours later, it's gone. It really is gone. So you've got to capture it in such a way that you can expound on it later on. But then thirdly, I say that go back to the ideas that you captured and meditate on them. Think on these things. Think on the ideas, right? Let your mind start ruminating and churning these ideas from side to side, angle to angle, 360 degrees, so that you can start looking at the possibilities. And uh, even as you do that, number four, we said you start talking about them to people, a small group of people who are trusted, people that you can entrust them. They are looking out for you. You are looking out for them. You have mutual respect for one another. Don't broadcast your idea to everyone. Don't say, oh, God told me to do this. And you're telling just about everybody like Joseph did. And he ended up in a pit, ended up in a prison, you know, ended up being molested. Don't speak all over the place about your idea. Just 
tell it to a small mastermind group that's number four but then number five plan start putting pen on paper and the head and the mind and you are cracking your head and you're strategizing and you're planning you're doing a strategic planning with the idea that's where the work begins the mind begins working on it and it starts expanding and you start seeing the possibilities you start seeing the things that you need you start seeing the resources that are needed the teams that are needed you start seeing it extrapolating itself in different ways in different formats right uh, you planning by the way can take quite a bit of time but you should plan it is a must that you plan with the idea that has come to you and then we said yesterday what do you do you start working on it you execute you rally the idea rally resources and so put the resources into motion put the people that need to be put into motion rally the idea execute the idea let it start going let it start morphing momentum action is your best friend when it comes to ideas putting them into action and start clothing them in a physical equivalent on the face of the earth so start rallying that idea now today let us just close the whole series of ideas by saying this what do you do with the ideas the last step in ideation is delivery you finally finally have something that someone can interact with you have something that is solving a problem is contributing that a, a stranger who is having a problem that this idea is solving can now interact with and this one this step can always be iterated over and over and over and over and over again because you can now present the product to the person and the person can test the product this is what they call beta testing alpha testing all those things they talk about testing the lean startup will tell you that, that that's a book uh, called the lean startup they will tell you that once you have an idea and it's a uh, the idea you just uh, channel it you know in the most uh, rudimentary basic format and the idea is that you're going to get feedback even as you've churned it out from the people who are interacting with it at least you've delivered instead of waiting until you have all the bells and the whistles you have feedback and then you iterate the delivery of that idea or the product and then you give back the product to the people and they experience it again and then they give you feedback and that's how you end up with your idea having made a face and having made a change and being felt on the face of the earth your obscurity ends there all along the idea is obscure all along nobody knows about it nobody cares about it yesterday some days back i interviewed a guy and i'm going to have him hosted here on Life Signatures Radio on Wednesday's uh, conversations and he's going to come at the end of December the last week of December and that's when we're going to host him you can listen to so this guy <laughs> he's basically been obscure at least to very many people until he has a product and now this product is changing people's lives his obscurity is ending and by the obscurity has different levels different layers that you got to peel out and we're still peeling it out and he was still obscure even before I talked about him on these episodes but uh, he's going to come out as as we progress so the reason as to why you're born is probably to deliver that idea you have no idea how important following ideas are probably you are born to deliver that idea this day could be important to you when you're delivering the idea it could be connected to your purpose it's the day that the world gets to test the fruits of your labor it's the day that the world is blessed and impacted positively by your idea so you can see that it it, it it took a process it took some time to get here but you are faithful to the very end you stayed the course and all ideas have always been developed that way they need to see the light of the day but they're always going to take a process and as the world interacts with your product or your service you get feedback on what needs to be done to improve it in other words the raw materials for ideas are what ideas that's it you want ideas use the ideas that you have and then iterate and improve on them without the original idea there will be no getting this important follow up ideas and pivoting and so on and so forth so be faithful with the idea 
up to the very dregs of the details and to the very end. This process I've talked about, the st starting to anticipate, capture, meditate on it, and then tell about it or mastermind about it and plan it out and rally out uh, the idea and deliver the idea. Honestly, it depends with two things. Depends with how big the idea is, but also it depends with how hungry you are to deliver this idea. The ball is basically going to be in our courts, all of us. Anything that you want in your life, anything you see around you was an idea and it has been brought into your life because of the hunger, the desire, the commitment. But anything that you don't see in your life probably is missing those things, the hunger, the desire and the commitment. And that's what you need to inject in those ideas that I am 100% sure you have. Hunger, commitment, desire. Follow through the ideas and deliver them. And you never know. Probably the answers you've been looking for all your life are in that idea. How about you delve into it, jump into it, and swim the river? Tomorrow we start another series of messages where we're going to be discussing something totally different about connections and purpose. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.